All right, <laughs> today we're going to go ahead and re uh, do a recording about XCPNG 8.3. I'm going to go ahead and do the install from the thumb drive to one of my mini PCs, and then I'll repeat the rest behind the scenes, and we'll get into the uh, installation of the K uh, XOA, or the uh, orchestrator. All right, well, let's get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and stir up the PC. I'm going to hit an escape key multiple times for this PC, which will bring up the boot screen eventually. Boot menu. There we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit install. Set it up in the US. Hit OK. Since this server was originally set up with XCPNG, it's going to ask me if I want to um, do a, a upgrade or do a perform a clean installation. I'm going to perform a clean. I am going to check uh, my MVME. Hit OK. I'm going to uncheck the MVME for this stage and I'm going to select my 500 gig hard drive. That is for the virtual machine storage. Hit OK. I'm going to leave it as EXT instead of LVM. Uh, this is for doing thin provisioning. Hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and just use local media because I'm using that thumb drive. I'm going to skip verification and put in my super secure password. All right, we're going to go with IPv4. I'm going to put in my IP addresses and my AT&T gateway. I am using a VLAN, in this case VLAN 1. So hit OK. You do not have to use VLANs. I am. And then you, I'm going to name my machines uh, XCP1. And I'm going to put in Google as the domains. Select. Um, I'm going to select America. I'm going to then choose New York since it's the closest, uh, closest time zone to where I'm at. There it is. I am going to provide an NTP server. In this case, I'm using time.nist.gov. And hit install. That's basically it. You let this thing do its installation and you reboot the server. In this case, I'm going to reload all of my machines. So, uh, clock wipe. All right, so first thing you're going to do is log into one of your hosts, which you're going to like this if you uh, want to get better managerial things, but XCPNG now has a new interface which allows you to, hold up, if I can sign in, allows you to actually see more things, such as in your dashboard you can see your current pool, CPU, uh, different system stats and things will be released more as they deploy further updates. Um, you can see more stats on your VMs. You can actually manage them from here, which is nice. And as it says here, ExoLite is under construction and that's what they're going to call this is ExoLite. That being said, let's go to deploy XOA up here at the top right. 
I'm going to select my local storage right now since that's the only storage I got and my VLAN 1 management interface. I am going <clears throat> to specify my name servers, which I'm going with Google again, and my static IP address. Oh, that's NTP server. Excuse me, I made a mistake. I need to read. The there we go. That's the DS. There we go. And then I'm going to do admin at ravenhawktech.local. My super secure password. I'm going to allow the SSH and put in the password for it. That way I can log in and it'll be the XOA user that you would log in as. All right, the XOA deployment is successful. So now we're just gonna go ahead and click this blue or purple box that says access XOA. There we go. All right. And of course, it wants you to register, so we can go ahead and click here and register the account. And we're going to add some servers. And we're going to call this. And you're going to want to click this box, Allow Unauthorized Certificates, and then hit Connect. I'm going to add all of my hosts back. That password didn't feel right. There we go. And it's going to create a pool for each of these. We'll get into the pools here in just a minute. You'll see that there's actually now three different pools. You have the one with the XOA, and then you have the other two hosts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into pools. We're going to go into this first pool. I'm going to rename it. In this case, I'm going to call it Cluster01. I'm going to add a host. Okay, you'll see it's counting up here now. Adding in all the storage and showing, of course, the different hosts. You'll then add the next host. All right, now if you go back to pools, You'll notice that the other two or the other two poles are gone. We're down to just the cluster. All right. The next thing we're going to end up doing is we're going to go here to new, go to storage. We're going to select the first host. I'm going to call this data store one, and shared data store is my description. I'm going to say that it's an NFS share. I'm going to select my NFS server. For my NAS. I'm going to select it to S, uh, NFS version 4 for me and then hit this little search icon on the far right. This will then drop down and then you'll have the option to select your path. In this case there's my data store. It's in use already. And then you would just go down here and hit create. That's a nice simple option there and then it'll show up under storages. So if you go here to home, you get a storage. It'll show up here. 
and you'll be able to see all the stats, the disks, the hosts, the logs, and so forth. Now, final thing we would want to do is go back to the pools, select the pool, go to advanced, I'm going to turn on high availability, and I'm basically going to select that it's going to go to my data store. Give it a minute, and then high availability icon will appear. This one will show up green. I'm going to choose my default storage, and I'm going to change that to data store 01. And then I'm going to change my default migration network here. Uh, personally, you would really want to use a, like a dedicated network. Uh, these machines only have one interface on them, so I'm just going to use my ETH0 on VLAN 1, which is my management network. And, and that's about it. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, please make sure to leave a like or a dislike uh, and subscribe. And then if uh, you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section. Uh, this is not going to become a whole XCP channel. Uh, I do do Proxmox as well. Um, and we'll be doing some Hyper-V content as well. Um, since I focus mainly on home labs and VMware decided to ditch the free option, um, my VMware content is going to be probably next to nil. So, all right, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you.